this is a continuation of Nell Dixon, uh, Maureen, Nell Maureen Dixon Ward, and uh, continuing the story of my young life. And um, we were in Arizona, and my daddy came out for his vacation. He had three weeks, and for my 20th birthday, they had been wanting to buy me a dinner ring. So uh, he and I went to a jewelry store and found a unique ring. And uh, and this is uh, the one, that, so they bought it for me for my 20th birthday. I think it was in 1954, I think it was uh, $150, and it was 12 full-cut diamonds uh, in uh, uh, white gold. And uh, I'm now 88, have worn it all these years and enjoyed it much. And so, um, meantime, before I left uh, there as a choir member at City Temple Presbyterian Church, which I had uh, become a member there, first church I ever joined, um, although I had attended Baptist churches earlier in my life. But uh, in the choir, uh, a young man came and uh, he was uh, uh, to sing in the choir and so uh, subsequently we began to date and uh, over a period of years, um, eventually he revealed that he wanted to marry me. But uh, of course then when I went to Tucson, I, it, we continued corresponding and uh, uh, so when my daddy came out, we were able to tour the area and see the beauties of the canyons and the mountains and uh, and the saguaro cactus and other kinds. They, there were many kinds of cacti in the desert there and beautiful plants and uh, loved that. And so we were able to make a number of pictures. We had a great camera. It was just a simple box camera, but took great pictures. And so we got a lot of pictures, which I still have. And uh, uh, so uh, he had that period of time and we would go out on the desert and have enjoy picnics. And he, as I said, he bought that ring and then we went and, and uh, rented a place at the Geronimo Hotel, that room, uh, before he went back and uh, to work again. Well, that was, uh, by that time it was November, past my birthday, and uh, which was the 11th. I was born on Armistice Day and now I celebrate on Veterans Day. <laughs> but uh, so uh, at Christmas time, he took five days off and flew out and joined us, uh, though we didn't have a, a car at our disposal, but uh, they had taxis that we were able to take. And at that time, he had an, a painful episode with his back, which he periodically had. Uh, it was uh, effects, I think, of a car wreck that he had been in um, before I was born, I believe. And uh, so he had to have some chiropractic treatments, and he took five treatments while we were out there and while he was there and then he went back to work again having you know, he was uh, you know uh, uh, that fixed his his back for the time being and and so um, and then the next time he he found that he was would be able to retire uh, at early take early retirement and uh, that the company would pay him uh, an amount of money in lieu of Social Security because he was too young to get it then. So he retired at age 62 uh, in uh, the following uh, after, uh, in the spring, in uh, June, I believe. And he had three weeks vacation coming for that year, so he was able to come out earlier. And he had the responsibility of packing everything up and renting uh, the place out the home and and uh, storing everything and uh, and then he he and bringing the things that we asked him to bring so uh, he was to meet us at uh, uh, 
at Alpine, Texas, which was a lovely climate for summertime because we, uh, my mother was apprehensive about the heat at, in Tucson in the summertime, so she felt we should go to a cooler climate uh, for the summer. And so she and I took uh, a train called the Sunset Limited out of California and uh, she rented uh, what they called a bedroom, which had two facing sofas and uh, storage for our luggage, all, including my guitar. And uh, and then uh, they ha it had a small bath as well as a part of that bedroom. So uh, it was a lovely experience. And we left Tucson on that train about... Uh, 7.30, I believe, that morning, and then we arrived in Alpine, Texas, uh, at 9 that night. And uh, we had made pre-arrangements with the, mo the hotel, the Holland Hotel in Alpine, and so that uh, the bellman came and got our luggage. It was just across the road uh, from the train, <laughs> and uh, and he took it and uh, and checked us in, and, and uh, so... Uh, we stayed there, and then Daddy joined us uh, on uh, around the 1st of June, and that was April. So then when he came, uh, the owner of the hotel was also uh, owned a, a motel, and that was more reasonable and bore to our uh, need at that time because it had a kitchenette and, and all. So we changed from the hotel when he came with the car, we changed it from the hotel to the motel. And uh, we enjoyed that summer. And uh, we would hear, uh, there was a wonderful Bible teacher named Dr. George Thomason who ha held the Bible chair at Sol Ross State College at that time. Now at Sol Ross State University. It was a teacher's college and a, a lovely school and still is. so. Uh, he taught there, and he was sought after to fill in uh, on all the churches if there was a need. So he would preach sometimes at the Baptist church, though he was a Baptist. He'd preach at the Methodist church and preach at the Disciples of Christ church. And in the summer, they had joint meetings where all those denominations joined together for summer services. And so we would follow him around and listen to him because we enjoyed his teaching so much and he was a wonderful man of God. So uh, that was the way our summer was spent and uh, at that time we found that uh, the uh, Hollywood company was filming uh, uh, Giant, which was uh, a story of Texas uh, written by Edna Ferber and I had read that years before in a magazine that was published first, and then uh, it had a, she, you know, published a book, and then later it became this movie with Elizabeth Taylor and Rock Hudson and James Dean, and I became friends with uh, the hotel owner and 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 he was also mayor of Alpine, and uh, he had had. Uh, severe arthritic condition in his neck so that he was not able to turn his head. And uh, and he found a wonderful chiropractor who was in Marfa, Texas, that was a neighboring town. And we found that they were uh, shooting that movie uh, out of Marfa on a ranch. And so my daddy was a mother was not able to go, but he and I went and watched them film a scene from the movie. And meantime, I had become friends with the daughter and uh, who was my age. And she was, uh, she became acquainted and was dating James Dean at the time. And so one day he came to pick her up and, and uh, she introduced me to him. So uh, I saw he was very shy and and mostly hung his head and looked at the floor and spoke in a monosyllable. <laughs> but, but anyway, that was an experience that I was surprised at how people are interested in that. 
And uh, so um, my friends named Betty Jo, and they were the White family, Betty, Betty Jo White. And uh, so then at that time, also the Bellman was a student at Sol Ross, and he asked me out. So I dated him a few times, and uh, he had a, a friend who was um, from a wealthy family, and uh, her parents were giving her a coming out party. I was thinking she was maybe a senior in high school, junior or senior, and so he, he asked me to go to that. Well, I needed a formal because it was a formal occasion, and uh, I found one in a shop, <laughs> and so we bought that. It was a lime green, and I enjoyed it for a period of years, you know. And uh, so that was uh, that was our, our summer with uh, Giant, and we got to meet some of the production people in the, because it was like a little lunch room at the motel, and we ate there, and, uh, and some of the people were also eating there. And... Uh, there was one elderly gentleman who had been uh, with the special effects on uh, the Ten Commandments of Cecil B. DeMille, and he was telling, you know, some of the uh, things that happened, and they had to to make the special effects with, like, the crossing the Red Sea and all those things, you know. So that was interesting to talk to him. And... Uh, so that was the way our summer was spent, and uh, and then we went back to to Tucson in the fall and rented a house, and uh, was near the University of Arizona, and so when I turned twenty one, at the meantime I got my G GED at uh, in Tucson, and then uh, I had been studying at home from the American School. Uh, which was a wonderful course um, of, uh, you know, preparing for, for college. And uh, so I applied at the University of Arizona when I turned 21, and they accepted me as a special student. I just wanted the music courses, so I took voice and had a lovely teacher named Miss Marguerite O, O-U-G-H. And uh, she was excellent, and then... I participated in their opera workshop program, which was a joy, and we, we practiced scenes from uh, the Magic Flute and, and Carmen, and uh, I met a young woman from Israel uh, named Ruth Freimeyer. She was beautiful. She was a young married woman. They were from Tel Aviv, I believe, and so she was also a part of the studies there, and uh, one of the professors' name was... Mr. Akmajan, he was uh, uh, from uh, one of the European nations, and uh, and so he was lovely. And then we had another professor, uh, and I also took a piano class from another professor. And there were like twenty five students in that class, and each one of us was had a piano to ourselves. It was a unique course, and and he had us changing. Uh, he ha had us to buy a music book, and then uh, uh, he would assign us to change a song from uh, one time to another, like from 3-4 to 4-4, four, four, and uh, and also to compose a little song. He he really, uh, in one semester, he did covered a lot of material, and he couldn't figure me out because I didn't tell him I played the guitar, and he said I had more facility musically than anybody except a girl who had been studying for about 10 years in the class. So uh, I never told him, but anyway, Mr. Anthony was his name. And uh, and so he was very good professor. So those were my courses there, and uh, I enjoyed those. And, and, uh, and then at the end, I had to appear before what they called the jury to get my final grades. And uh, that was where you have to perform for the professors sitting there listening to you, which was very scary to me. I had to go to the Lord about that. And he, he gave me some assurances from Isaiah. You know, I'm your God. I will be with you. Fear not. And 
and uh, so I leaned on him and his word, and the Lord got me through it. And so when I received my grades, uh, sure enough, they gave me ones, <laughs> which is like eight, uh, because uh, Miss O said it was primarily because I had memorized so much music and and uh, and all. She said she wanted my voice to uh, be bigger. You know, so she said, you have to exercise, and and uh, you just, she thought I was coming back, you know, but I never went back again. I just had that one semester, but it was uh, quite an experience, and I enjoyed it a lot, and and uh, so then uh, from there, we went back to Marfa for the next summer, and uh, because we'd heard of this wonderful chiropractor, and he had equipment that was beyond what others had. It was very expensive and and uh, very, uh, um, I don't know how to describe it, but it was, uh, uh, people would come from hundreds of miles to have him treat them. And of course we came from a long way and mother took those treatments all summer from him. And he said that her problem was in the liver. And so he, he treated, he also, uh, I think he took maybe x-rays or some sort of uh, device that uh, where he looked at her brain and she said he said you need to live every day you know to the fullest because you've got a lot of congestion in your brain you know in other words that was, uh, and that's what he foresaw which later she had the little strokes where the capillaries, uh, you know, are stopped up and, and uh, it causes memory loss and all. So, uh, so that was what he was saying, advising her to enjoy the time that she had, you know, before something like that occurred. So that was a good, uh, good experience. And, uh, and so then uh, we were going to leave for Tucson again at the end of that time. Oh, by the way, at that time, I made a commitment. Uh, there was a summer camp meeting, and it was wonderful. Uh, it was a Baptist encampment, but people came from all over and uh, to attend it, and, and I stayed in the dorm. That was the first time I was ever away from my parents overnight. <laughs> and by that time, I was 20. And, uh, and so they gave an invitation. I sang in the choir, and... Uh, we had lovely cooling showers through the day, and it was a beautiful, in the foothills of the mountains and all, lovely setting. And uh, and so uh, met a lot of lovely Christian people and had good teaching. Some of the people from Dallas, from the Baptist churches in Dallas came and taught. And then we had a, a great choir director and a lot of nice choir. And uh, toward the end, they gave an invitation for people who wanted to devote their lives to foreign missions. Well, I went forward, you know, thinking that was what it was, but, um, you know, it was actually for whatever the Lord wanted me to do. And then uh, later on, I was baptized. I really wanted Dr. Thomason, whom I mentioned earlier, uh, from Alpine to baptize me, but he said it wasn't ethical because uh, he was not a pastor of a church. He just, you know, taught at Sol Ross and uh, taught the Bible. So uh, he advised me to let my pastor, where I was attending church, it was First Baptist in Marfa, and uh, he and he was a lovely pastor. So I, I said, fine, I'll. And so he baptized me, and that was quite a, uh, a blessed event. And uh, a, a 14-year-old friend. Uh, was the organist at that church, and he played for for my baptism. He played "Were You There When They Crucified My Lord," and uh, so that I was thankful for that experience. And my mother was delighted because she had taught me out of waiting when I was seven. I wanted to be baptized with a friend of mine at the Baptist church where I attended uh, as a seven-year-old in Dallas, and uh, and so she said she got to be. Uh, fearful that I would never mention it again, you know, so, so she was happy about my decision to be baptized there, and I was, 
And so then when we left Martha, we uh, decided to go to Hot Springs, Arkansas for a time and and uh, take advantage of the good waters there because they had always benefited Mother. And uh, so uh, we went there and, and rented a place for one month and I was able to go to the Y and uh, get in the, the swimming pool, which was lovely, and I was going to tried to, to uh, learn to swim, but it didn't work out for me. I got a cold or something and, and I had to withdraw from that. But it was a nice month there in Hot Springs, and uh, my daddy would go and get five gallons of that wonderful water and come and pour it in our bathtub and let us use it like that, you know. And uh, they had uh, uh, also, there are natural springs of various kinds there in hot springs, but the main one is the radioactive water, and it's uh, it's naturally comes out, you know, hot, and I don't know what the degree is, maybe uh, around uh, uh, 90 some odd degrees, but it comes out naturally that way, and they had the bathhouses and, and all where mother had taken uh taken advantage when she was young and had had a heart attack. And the heart specialist would only recommend that she go to Hot Springs and take the radioactive water bath. And uh, so uh, she it helped her so much when she was there all summer and uh, that she was able to begin to climb the little mountains and, and gained a pound a day. And uh, so she had gotten down to like 80 pounds, I think. And so she was, uh, it really was beneficial to her. And she had no more problems with her heart, you know, for many years. So anyway, that was our uh, time in between. And on our way up there, we got uh, newspaper which announced that James Dean had been killed in the car wreck and that was quite a shock you know and uh, so anyway we went back to Tucson and that's where we we rented the place and I attended the university for one semester and then uh, from then on well uh, we wound up buying a little house near the university uh, and uh, on Hawthorne Street, about a block and a half from the university, and it was a lovely little house, two bedrooms and a bath and kitchen.